introduce our special guest this evening. After 38 years of living the quote unquote perfect Christian life, being a mother of three young boys and a wife of 15 years, Stacy Grand began to have doubts about her faith as she watched countless other Christians fall for conspiracy theories. She wondered how could they shun science and blindly believe misinformation so easily? That was the tipping point for her to examine what she believed and why. So from Pentecostal to Reformed theology, she only ever wanted to find the truth. Not intending to get rid of her faith, that is where the path would ultimately lead. When the cognitive dissonance was finally put, the, put to rest, she found healing and online activism and publicly deconverting. She shares her story through different platforms and loves connecting with others who have been through the same religious trauma she experienced. You can find Stacy every week co-hosting Secular Soapbox on the Skeptic Haven YouTube channel, and you can find her here tonight with us. Stacy, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. There. there hi go. hi welcome hi. thank you for having me I'm we're very so excited. excited thank you so much for oh joining gosh. us tonight thank you yeah. so much I've so never done a show like this where I can see all the participants <laughs> so <laughs> I know it's all part of the community yeah yeah it's actually quite quite cool so hi everyone yeah. I love it <laughs> yeah. yes welcome yeah. and we're so excited to have you for our yeah. first episode of yeah. the year which I think is super appropriate given you know you've kind of spent the last year or so on sort of a whirlwind journey from on the fundy yeah. spectrum mm -hmm. to secular online activists it's, with your own show and everything. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's kind of funny that Dave popped on right now. Sorry, I have to tell this quick story because when Dave came on um, Secular Soapbox, he's like, uh, I'm like apostasy who deconverted on a Sunday and had her show by a Wednesday. So it was quite fast. <laughs> My mom reminded me of that this morning. But um, yeah, it all happened very quickly in a whirlwind, not intentionally at all, because I didn't even know this world existed um, when I was at the beginning of my journey. So <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah. sucked you in quickly. <laughs> Quick, yes very quickly. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's yeah. great. We're so glad you are here yeah. to join us. And yeah. before we start, mm -hmm. if you don't mind telling us a little bit about what you've been up to and do you have any goals for the new year since, you know, you didn't do anything last year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say my, my goal is just to uh, just continue doing what I've been doing with um, Secular Soapbox and just kind of continuing my online presence and getting to know more people in the community. And um, I, I, even though I have a bit of a, of a presence, I still feel a little shy. So mm -hmm. um, just coming out of my shell a bit more and continue learning. And just, I'm, I'm constantly listening to podcasts and reading books and I, I, you can't know enough. Right. So um just continue learning like I have been because I find it all so fascinating as you're as you're deconverting and um, I still find everything that I have learned about the Bible uh, since not being a Christian the most amazing thing I have discovered uh, the history of it and, and how it all came together and how myth like mytho mythological it is um, so I find that so uh, intriguing and so that's kind of where my my goal has been is just to continue on that journey well I agree yeah. with you. you can never <laughs> learn enough and it's no. always a good time to read a good book so yeah. I like your goal thank you and <laughs> actually another, another goal <laughs> is um I would like to attend a conference maybe at some point Ooh. but I don't know we'll have to see how uh you know, the economy is this year and being in Canada, but that is a goal that I, I do have that I'm talking to my husband about. So we'll see. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> well, definitely keep us yeah. posted on your, yeah. your doings and goings on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd love to hear it. Yeah. Okay. Well, for those of us who don't know your story, mm -hmm. would you like to give us a little bit of sure. a background on what you grew up in and paint us a picture? Yes. <clears throat> um, so my background is um, growing up in a Pentecostal 
uh, charismatic home. Um, I basically, to kind of break it down, I gave my heart to Jesus. I was told at two years old, I answered an altar call as much as you can as a two-year-old. Um, I began speaking in tongues quite early as well. Um, my life was very much about uh, prophetic dreams and um, also a lot of uh, spiritual warfare was a part of my life. And um, I used to apparently could see things in the spirit realm. So I had a lot of fear in that area about seeing demons and not knowing if I was opening up doors into the demonic and letting things into my life. And um, so I think the charismatic world is a very, it can be very scary um, as a child. So needless to say, I, I dealt with a lot of anxiety, but trying to counteract that with prayer, it was, not, it was a very messy <laughs> recipe, right? Um, yes. But I was a very devoted Christian. Um, I got baptized at age 10. And then um, to make sure I really meant it, I did it again at 14, because um, you can never be too sure. <laughs> And you don't want to risk it when there's, you know, no. demons and things in the mix. <laughs> yeah. So I, I recommitted my life at, at 14 because I felt like I had backslidden as much as you can as a preteen. Um, but I was, I was a very good Christian girl. Like I, I never partied. I never, I never drank. I never smoked or did drugs or, um, uh, I was never promiscuous. Yeah. Now, now I drink wine. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Um, I, I was very by the book in, in all, everything I could like, cause I, I always felt guilty all the time. Like I had a lot of guilt just in my own brain for thoughts and, um, and any, any thought I had, I, I just felt super convicted. And, and so I made sure to keep my life very in order because I was always go, um, feeling guilty just for any thought that I had if it wasn't perfect or pure so um yeah I I, I was very hard on myself um so then I I when I got older and I got married to my husband who actually wasn't a Christian believe it or not <laughs> scandal how did this happen I didn't want to marry a Christian um I wanted to marry someone who I, I know that sounds very strange but I didn't want to marry someone from church because I thought those those kinds of guys were always they just met you and they wanted to get married immediately like they were always looking for a wife like well they wanted you, to bone <laughs> yeah like yeah. that's that's why <laughs> yeah like even though I was saving saving myself till marriage um I just felt like if you went to a new church and a guy came up to you and met you they were like oh are you single yeah okay well they just wanted to like they looked at you like okay you must be sent from God like you must be <laughs> the person I have to marry so I was kind of like I don't really want to marry someone that I meet at church and mm -hmm. so when I met my husband my only question to him was basically like, do you believe in Jesus? And he said, yeah, yeah, I believe in Jesus. And I was like, oh, okay, that's good. And then my other question was, have you ever tried a Ouija board? And he said, no. And I was like, okay, good. You haven't opened any demonic doors. So <laughs> oh my goodness, I we're love good. this so much. <laughs> so I, I can't I relate it. so hard uh, to this. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, good. I, I'm just laughing because I used to, I used to be a pagan and my husband made like a Ouija board out of one of our end tables that's in my living room right now oh. and I'm just love it so oh, that's much so that I've yeah. opened so many demonic doors man let me tell you yeah well I like I never even would read like my horoscope in the newspaper or like nothing I wouldn't even glance at it and anyway so I thought well good he believes in Jesus he's never opened a demonic door in that way so he it's a clean like we're, we're good I can work with that so we got married and and he was a very respectful 
very respectful person who respected me, even though he wasn't like a diehard Christian. Right. Um, so that all worked out great. And then, um, because we got married and then, uh, we actually had some trouble having kids. We had, uh, infertility issues. Um, it took us four years to have our son, our first son. Um, once we did have our son, I felt that we really owed it to God, um, for finally blessing us with a child, even though it was the doctor who actually, like, <laughs> it was him who came through and helped us. Right. And I, I remember, think, that oh, must be I, so frustrating for doctors after all that work I they know. put into it. And then you well, thank God. <laughs> I know. And it was, it was the doctor. Cause, um, I had a condition that I actually needed surgery for that. And in, in the end I got pregnant, uh, with our son because I had the surgery and I had endometriosis. And so he helped basically cure it. Right. And then after four years, I got pregnant with our son. And, um, I remember posting on Facebook, like announcing I was pregnant and thinking, I'm so thankful to our doctor and thank you, God. And my grandma actually like messaged my mom and got mad that I didn't thank God. Number one, uh, for uh, getting pregnant. And my mom's like, she did, but also the doctor helped like, anyways, it was just so ridiculous, but so I'm kind of going on little bunny trails, but, um, Mm -hmm. because we finally had our miracle baby, um, I felt, okay, now we really have to raise our children in the faith and we have to be very committed and we have to start going to church every week. And so I kind of like really upped my, my faith even more or my church attendance. And I just thought, okay, we're dedicating them the way, same way I was dedicated. So if you're not familiar with like baby dedications, it's, I don't know if the audiences are not, but you basically well, go ahead and go tell and, us about it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you go in front of your church, depending on your denomination. Um, and you're basically like saying a vow to God and with the pastor and, and saying like, we're, we're giving the, the God gave us this child. So we're basically saying he's, he's not ours, he's God's and he's entrusting us with him. And so we're going to raise him up in the faith and hopefully like he will choose to follow Jesus and like, he's basically not ours, but we're dedicating him back to Jesus and back to God. And so we did a baby dedication. And so I just felt like we had, we owed this to God. So we raised our kids. Um, We have three boys now and um, all, but the last one was dedicated. The first two were dedicated. And then the pandemic happened with the third and we didn't actually have them dedicated. So, um, Anyways, so that's when I really like um, got uber religious, I feel. Um, I was always religious, but I really, really, really um, just kicked it up with, with, my, with my boys. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of going off onto so many no. different trails. So, but I, yeah. Um, I didn't know if you said this because I was yeah. a little bit distracted by the chat. Um, what denomination did you come from? So it was basically Pentecostal. Okay. Um, so very uh, charismatic, laying on of hands, speaking in tongues, uh, prophecy, healing. Would it, would it be fair to say, um, I guess uh, my familiarity with that comes from the ones in the U.S. I went to a, a charismatic um, school when I was younger, and okay. it seems like the kind of the main thrust of that denomination has to do a lot with like the Holy Spirit piece of mm-hmm. the Trinity. So it's a lot yeah. of this like spirit world uh, yeah. belief that's central. So, okay. Absolutely. That I think is like that is a, a main focus is like the works of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. Which to me, and it sounds like you were kind of hinting at this too, like that seems terrifying This because you're basically <laughs> teaching kids about, you know, demons and, and oh, yeah. spirits and everything. Did that stick with you for yes, a while? Yes, it did because um, I feel like the fear of demons and um, like the devil 
and hell especially that really really stuck with me I feel like I actually had more of a belief in that at times than I sometimes when I would start to really kind of try to rationalize what I believed in and start to think okay I maybe like there were times where I would break it down like some of this sounds really crazy some of this sounds really weird like I would have those moments of doubt but then I'd start to think but I really believe that there's a devil I really believe that um, there's demons. I believe there's a hell. So if I believe in that, then there has to be a God. So I would just kind of come back around and I wouldn't follow through with those doubts because I believe so strongly that there was a devil and there were demons because I felt so tormented in my mind um, by anxiety over the supernatural. Does that wow. make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. So it's almost like you, you didn't need, you know, that much proof of God because you were made to be so afraid of the devil and the demons that it just exactly. kind of naturally followed that yeah. well, it might be the other side of the coin. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. So there there was a um there was one time like uh in 2019 where I came super close to to kind of dropping it all, but I just was, I came right back around like, but no, I believe that there's a devil. So I can't believe in a devil and not believe in God. So, okay, well, then I guess this is it. Like, yeah, I guess you can't afford to not believe in a God if you're still afraid of a devil. <laughs> exactly. And I, um, I feel like if I would have just continued pulling on those doubts and those, and that thread, I would have got an out sooner, mm -hmm. but I was so afraid of of hell that I just was like no I can't risk it yeah, I'm too scared like yeah. I can tell you that we still have people that have been out of religion for a very long time and are far and are still afraid of hell like that yeah. fear just keeps brewing in the back of their Ugh. brains you know even though they know that it's logically it's not real right <laughs> yeah yeah well like one story that I've talked about on my TikTok um, I did a story. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the singer Carmen from the 80s. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh I think a few goodness. of you are. Okay. Blast so when, from the past. Yes. Yeah. So when I was five years old, so five years old, my grandma showed me a video of his because he used to do those really um, theatrical music videos, right? Because he, he did some pretty, like his songs were really like catchy, right? Um, more like didn't, storytelling song. Yeah. Didn't and he, he have the one about like Satan bite the dust? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. I but miss he, this listening to secular music in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't have that. He had, he had this one song called, um, I think it was Revival in the Land. And basically it was, um, a demon coming down to hell and talking to Satan on like Satan's throne. And he's t giving him an update on like, okay, we've done all of this. We we've done like a hundred thousand murders. We've caused this many abortions. We've caused these many car accidents, but they're still praying. Nothing will get them from stopping to pray and blah, 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 blah. And, and Satan just gets angrier and angrier because the saints are still praying. But it's terrifying because like they're in hell. It's this creepy demon talking to this scary Satan. And she's like, Daisy, come and see this video. And I'm like, okay. And I sit there and I'm just like terrified. So you show that to a five-year-old. Okay. So I had that picture in my head and then it was like, okay, time to go to bed. And I'm like, oh my God, how am I supposed to sleep? So I, of course I would believe in hell and have this picture of Satan and demons. And then I struggle with anxiety and I struggle with my thoughts. And then another time when I was older, probably around 13 or 14, I asked her, you know, mama, I'm, I'm really struggling with this. And she's like, okay, I'll pray with you. So she prays with me and when she's done praying, she says, well, okay, I, I prayed with you, but if you let the enemy come back, he's going to bring back the demons seven times stronger. So 
I was like, okay. So then of course, when anxiety comes back, because anxiety always comes back, I think, well, what did I do? What door did I open? And now I think, okay, great. Now it's coming back seven times stronger. Great. Now I'm really in for it. So what a a great solution for a child with anxiety. Exactly. Make them worry that it's their fault if they have anxiety about anxiety. Yeah. That's going to cure the anxiety to make them have more anxiety. Yeah. So Uh, that is what growing up in like a charismatic, and like my mom was never like that. My mom wouldn't ever talk to me that way about that kind of thing. I don't know why I would go to my grandma sometimes, but um, yeah. So anyways, that was just horrible. Um, anyways, I don't know where I was going with that, Sorry. but no, it's can... my fault. I, I asked. No. <laughs> okay. It's not yeah. your fault. That's it. No. Just kind of explains a bit of yeah my childhood <laughs> yeah no it really the does religious trauma yeah yeah because we have yeah. people who join with all sorts of different religious backgrounds some christian some you know pretty much anything um and there's all so many different versions and varieties so yeah it's helpful yeah. to kind of yeah. paint a picture for what right. was going on so mm-hmm. i mean that's some scary stuff like mm-hmm. how did you deal with that um even even as an adult that's scary like i mean that's one of the things that people call into rfr yeah. about all the time like, yeah you know what i just i guess as i got older i thought well i i have the power i have the name of jesus so i don't have to be afraid but i still had anxiety Um, it's only really been since leaving the charismatic faith that my anxiety has gotten better. Plus I've on like anxiety medication. So that has helped too. You're actually allowed to get treatment (laughs) rather than just worry that it's your fault because you thought of demons. Exactly. So I, I am an advocate for mental health and getting like the help that you need. And so, Mm. um, yeah. So I, I ended up going on antidepressants because I'm like, wait, I think I actually need that. <laughs> and there's some, nothing wrong with that. I hear you, girl. Um, I hear yeah. you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You're yeah. preaching the truth, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, really leaving, leaving the charismatic behind and, and realizing spiritual warfare is nothing but a load of bullshit. Um, and just kind of deconstructing that while I was still a Christian, that actually helped. I didn't realize I was deconstructing it, but I did. Ah, oh, so that was something that you started to deconstruct before you were even thinking about yeah. leaving the faith in any yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, how, absolutely. How did that happen? Walk us through that. So I came across um, in 2019, I came across a documentary that was a Christian documentary, uh, but it was from a reformed theology uh, perspective. And it basically uh, exposed um, the word of faith, the charismatic uh, faith, uh, Christianity, I guess you can call it. And I realized, oh my gosh, this is all a bunch of crap. Um, what has I been believing my entire life? And that was a real wake up call for me. And I realized that I had been believing a lot of untrue things about Christianity. And um, it was very, I don't know, I I felt to me, that was more scary than deconverting. I felt like, what has been my life? What have I believed? This is, this is freaky. I think I believed a lie my whole life about like charismatic Christianity. So from there, rather than like walking away completely, I thought, okay, I still believed Christianity was true. I just had the wrong version of it because I thought, well, of course it's real, but I just had the wrong one. So that's what led me into going to um, reform a reform church um, and getting into like Calvinism, which is really heavy and I don't recommend it. I don't think anyone in your audience is probably looking for Calvinism churches I, <laughs> at like, all. She's shaking so her head is, no. 
like I I'm not familiar with Reformed Church as at all. Can you just yeah. I don't want you this being like the main point no. we're talking. Give me no, give no, me no. like a brief explanation of what that is because um, that is a new thing to me. <laughs> yeah. So I was in it for a, just a very short time. It was kind of like my stepping stone out. Um, it Calvinism is like. I don't even remember all. It's like a five point. There's like five points of Calvinism. It's just like, pardon? What were you going to say? Is it the deterministic um, point of like your soul has a purpose that it's supposed to do? Or I might be getting confused. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's like, it's basically Mormonism was influenced by Calvinism. Didn't know that. Sorry. I just saw that in the chat. Um, (laughs) So they believe in like, election like you were everyone was already elected before they were born on who was god was choosing to go to heaven so you basically you have free will but you don't really like god already predestined so monsters and create okay all right uh sorry (laughs) um We'll have a lot to talk about after. Um, yes, I'm looking yes. forward to the hangout. It's getting yeah. live. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so I, I like. I didn't is, mean to go on this tangent. It's just that I'm. I've heard of Calvinism, but a Reformed Church was a new term to me. So I just yeah. wanted like a little brief synopsis of what that was, and then go back to the talk because I just haven't yeah. heard of it before. <laughs> it's very dry. It's very. It's it's um, I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't a good good time it wasn't a good time <laughs> it wasn't a good time no you know what i will just look up reformed <laughs> churches on the all-knowing god google and we will now yeah. move on yeah <laughs> sounds it's, like we a lot of people in the chat them. know a lot about this so mm-hmm. um yeah and so, so- I'm curious, like mm-hmm. how, what made you gravitate to that? Like once you started questioning the charismatic church, how did well, you evaluate what to go to next? So I thought that like charismatic churches, I felt like they were really just kind of cherry picking the Bible at times. I felt like they were just sort of, um, they weren't really getting deep into the doctrine. They weren't, um, they just weren't very heavy on theology. And I wanted to know why I believed what I believed, right? I didn't want to just go to the church and like sing some songs and feel good and just get like this little like, oh, you're such a good person sermon. I wanted to actually like be taught the Bible. I wanted to know how it all came together. So that I I was really searching, right? I wanted to know the truth. I wanted to, to know everything about the Bible. And so Calvinism seemed like it was really preaching the Bible, um, like word for word, straight from the Bible. And a lot of reformed churches, they preach, I can't remember all the terms anymore, but they'll preach like line by line every week. Like they they don't have topical sermons where they'll just kind of like take a verse here and there. Like they'll go through every single book and they'll go line by line. So it's pretty heavy. And I'd walk out of there like, I don't even know what they just said. Like, that was so, so heavy. Exegetical. Yeah, something like that. Harmony. Yeah, everyone. Okay, you guys all know. (laughs) Everyone knows. Um, And so the church we joined uh, had two sermons on Sunday. So they had a morning and an afternoon. It was, like, intense. And, like, you would go to both of them? You were kind of required to. And we were like, uh, maybe. Like, but, but but brunch yeah yeah <laughs> like I'm almost I want a mimosa and an omelet do I have to go for <laughs> do yeah I have to go to both <laughs> yeah exactly but they kind of like expected you to go to both and so we became members there two years ago this month at the end like yeah and um it was like a big like big deal they like mm-hmm. make you profess your faith faith they baptized our children um so that was a big deal and um yeah so we became members and then six months later we moved away and we moved four hours away because uh we always wanted to move to the city that we're living in now it's a small town in a beautiful part of the country and it's been our dream to move here and so 
my husband was working from home and we're like, okay, you know what? We can sell our place and we can move to a, a bigger property in a smaller town. Let's do it. And the church was really sad because they, it's a really like, it's a tiny church with a lot of old, old, old people. And they were like, oh, good, a young family. Oh, great. Now you're leaving, right? Yeah, so, I was going to say, yeah. I bet they have trouble attracting a lot of young, yeah. vibrant members. <laughs> yeah, they were like, yay, young people. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> and so we left and that was in August of 2021 that we moved. And it was when we moved away and we were trying to find a church in the city we live in now, but I kind of had that pressure of like, I don't have to go every week. I don't have to go twice every week. My kids aren't in Christian school because they were in a private Christian school. All my friends were Christian. My whole, I had bubble wrapped myself in this Christian community where I didn't have anyone that wasn't Christian. Everyone I talked to was Christian. And I was out of that. And it was just me, my husband, my kids, and my mom. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, I stopped listening to sermons because I would be at home and I would listen to sermons all day, like nonstop. The way I listen to podcasts now of like these types of shows and I would listen to sermons and I was, I finally felt like, oh, I don't have to do that. And I started exploring like, like a little bit more liberal type of podcast, like kind of like, Ooh, I wonder what like, I wonder what they you talk about. You sinner, you. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I kind of, oh, I, I can listen to whatever I want. Like, not that anyone told me I couldn't, but I just kind of kept myself in this box, right? And I also have a little bit of a fascination with cults and MLMs, right? I've me too. always, yeah. Me too, girl. I've me too. always been fascinated. <laughs> and the, here's the other thing I always was scared since I was like a preteen of being in a cult. And I used to always say to my mom, how do we know we're not in a cult? People who are in cults don't ever, they say, oh, I'm in a cult, right? So uh, I was like, question. how do we know we're not in a cult? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> so I started listening to some podcasts on cults. And I also was listening to an, another podcast on MLM. And I was just like, really seeing the connection with those even more than I had before. And then I was listening to podcasts on like QAnon because I found that super fascinating too because that's like another call, right? Mm -hmm. And it was just like, it was starting to like really stare me in the face. And it was also around the time of like the vaccine for COVID was coming out. And I just saw like Christians were just being so ridiculous about it and my husband's very science-minded and I was finally away from all my friends who were not getting vaccinated and they were sending me all these conspiracies all the time and I would be like Brian look at this look at this right and he's like oh my god and so that's what I mean when I said like all the conspiracies that people like Christians were getting into and finally one day I was like okay what is it that all these Christians seem to fall for multi-level marketing, right? So a lot of them go into that. Um, they, a lot of them follow this QAnon stuff. And a lot of them are following for this, the not getting vaccinated and they're following for these conspiracies. I'm like, what are they not seeing or what are they choosing to ignore? Or what are they like? And they're believing something over here that in the Bible but they're not seeing the truth with like COVID and the vaccines. It just, there was a disconnect for me. I don't know how to explain that properly. Whenever I try to explain this story, it's like, they're just, they're blinded to something. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, it's just not making sense to me. So it's like you recognized a similar flaw in reasoning that, that yes. you're seeing in two different places. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I don't know how to quite explain that when I explain that story. I'm like, I need to figure out better words for that. No, because <laughs> there's a lot of people here that have gone through 
that's like, I know Car's gone through that experience mm-hmm. and I've gone through that experience where you, you don't know how you got there, but you get there. Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> like I just got there and right. I, I was, I kept talking it out with my husband and talking and out with him and he was kind of seeing the wheels turning and he, he just kind of let me talk and, and then he didn't influence it in any way. He just was seeing me kind of like, okay, yeah, go for it. Like whatever you want to do. And, and, um, but I was still afraid of hell. And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. one day I just asked him, um, what, like I cornered him in the kitchen and I said, do you believe in creation or evolution? Knowing what he believed, but mm-hmm. He didn't come right out. He's like, well, he didn't want to like scare me. I think he didn't want to push me. He's like, well, you know, like maybe there's room for both. Like, and I said, no, 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 just, just tell me, like, I can take it. What do you believe? Even though I knew. And he's, I said, do you believe the earth 6,000 years old? And he's like, no, like (laughs) that's ridiculous. And I was like, okay, so you believe in evolution? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, okay, that's what I needed to hear. Cause I've been told it's 6,000 years old and I just need to know, like, I don't want to be lied to anymore. Just tell me. He's like, well, no, of course it's not 6,000 years old. I'm like, okay, thank you. And so, so this I, wasn't something you had really spoken about together because I knew, I knew what he believed and I was just afraid of mm-hmm. going down that path. Right. Yeah. Cause he's, yeah. he's really smart. And, um, anytime we would try to talk about anything about the Bible, if he would try to bring up little things like the Old Testament, it says some pretty crazy stuff, you know, I'd be like, you can't say that. Like, I didn't want him to criticize anything. So I didn't criticize anything for him. So we just kind of had these no, no go zones. Right. Yeah. So, but now I was like, no, just tell me, I need you to tell me straight up. And so I just said to him, I'm, I have a lot of questions and I have a lot of doubts and I, I want to pursue these doubts, but I'm really terrified of health. I don't know how to get over that. And so he's like, well, maybe this will help. He's like, I saw this quote on Twitter and it said, life is the spark between two identical voids, the one before birth and the one after death. Maybe that'll help you. And it actually did. It just like this, I was like, oh my God. I'm like, I don't remember before I was born. That is an eternity. And I, and it was almost like, it just something clicked for me. And I was like, thank you. I think I can explore this. And I just, I did, I went, I went for it and I didn't really tell him what I was doing necessarily. Like, um, but I just needed that little push. Mm -hmm. And so I went and continued like just looking for the things I needed to look for and, joined a bunch of different Reddit boards and just um, mm-hmm. continued finding things on YouTube and just, I don't even remember. I was just trying to find information. And yeah, so that was all last, well, now I guess fall of 2021. And wow. I mean, that's yeah. really recent. Very recent, but I'm the kind of person, like if I want to know something, I find it out like I and then once you know something you you can't unknow it and then as soon as I found out about Noah's Ark being um in other mythologies that predated the Bible to me that was when I was like okay the Bible is not infallible then because I believed it was up until that moment I'm like if that is the case then I can't trust any of it and if I can't trust that then I can't trust that God's real and this is all a sham. Yeah. And so I just it all unravels. It just yeah. did. Yeah. So was yeah. your husband like because you sound like you were very devout when was he more just like a support system? Like, you know, whatever yeah. you do, you know, I want to be supported because I love you. But then when you start going through the deconstruction process, he was I like, I will share with you all my opinions. <laughs> yeah. 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 He he was very like supportive. Like he kept saying to me, like, go slow. Like he, cause this is my identity. Like he thought people would think that I had lost my mind because if you knew me, you would just think, Oh, Stacy, a Christian, like, that's just how you would mm. 
that's just me right mm-hmm. at back then um so he was just like go slow don't don't make any rash decisions like he was supportive but um he kept saying I don't think you're wrong but he didn't want me to like think something and then be like oh wait no that's too scary I'm gonna go back no I I don't want to I want to still go to church or something but um he was a supportive husband too about going to church. And he also said he just had, he liked the idea of there possibly being a heaven. He had a, Mm -hmm. he thought it was a romantic idea that he thought if there is a heaven, I'd like to go. (laughs) But he just said there was nothing that told him that it was possible in any way, shape or form. He was just like, it just, it just doesn't seem real, but I think because I had such a childlike faith, he really wanted it to be true. And he always said, I wish I could have faith like you. I just can't. And he admired it, but it wasn't, it's just not him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's so interesting too. Like you've mentioned a couple of times, this, this concept that like, once you don't believe it anymore, you can't just go back, you know, I mean, certainly people can convert and deconvert and things like that, but it's like, you can't choose to believe something that you don't believe is true. No, no, not at all. Yeah. That's really interesting. It sounds like your husband was really supportive in Mm -hmm. like the best way possible to not push you, but was still supporting you. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, he, he really is like, he's amazing. And our relations, like we've always had a great relationship, but it got even better and stronger um, throughout this and we had some of the best conversations and um, I just was always like you're amazing I was crazy like thank you for just being you weren't crazy you were just indoctrinated (laughs) I was no I know yeah like but but when I think that you know this is a something that we kind of express to people you know that you know we have to deal with these issues it's like you can't force someone to have an idea, yeah. but you can support them to go on the journey. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and I think that's the most important thing. It's just like, well, what do you think about this? And like, well, okay, don't jump in a hundred percent, but take your time, you know? Yeah. And I think that you're, yeah. that's a, that's a more important message to just be a supporter and not force. Yeah. And I think your exactly. husband did a really good job with that. <laughs> yeah. He, he did he was he's wonderful yeah speaking of that did you uh find any other support systems or areas of support while you were going through this period of questioning was it just like you and your husband kind of on an island exploring this yourselves or did you like reach out to anybody yeah um after I told my husband I immediately told my mom mm. and um I was excited to tell her I was a little nervous, but not that she would be upset, but I was just wondering how is she going to take this because it's coming from me. This is going to be so shocking. Um, But when I did tell her, she was kind of relieved because um, she has had a really hard time, I guess, believing her whole life. And um, we've now had so many great conversations because she said, do you remember when I used to ask you, um, you know, when you pray for something, do you believe it'll actually happen? And I said, yeah. And she's like, oh, okay. She was looking for these little cracks in in me where she could kind of say, hey, I don't actually believe, but she felt like she had to sort of put on this front for so long. And so we've had um, the most amazing journey together coming out of this and that's wonderful yeah that's so wonderful (laughs) yeah so um she she was just really relieved to just finally be like yes I can (laughs) I can come out of this too (laughs) because she just like the breathing like that air of release yeah Yeah, Yeah. that's amazing (laughs) yeah because she she was in it for um 50 years at that time and um but she never that's why I'm like, she never forced any of those types of things on me because she didn't fully, I guess, believe she, she, mm-hmm. you know, took us to church and stuff, but um, the, the whole demon stuff, she never, 
she never was responsible for any of that but Mm -hmm. um yeah so I I had her as a support and then um I just found the online community and um actually my sister-in-law uh ex-christian Erin which is yes uh, yes she's gonna <laughs> which, be here next month also she told me yeah <laughs> yeah I'm which, so excited <laughs> again I didn't know she deconverted um because we have a huge extended family and I hadn't seen her in a couple of years again we like we're sister-in-laws but we come like her husband and my husband are brothers but there's 12 siblings in their family right Whoa. and there's a there's a lot of them we can't all stay in touch all the time and so it's, it comes with the big families like I'm, family. I'm one of six so yeah <laughs> yeah it just yeah. happens <laughs> so as I was listening to my daily round of half a dozen podcasts like I do while I'm doing laundry and doing my chores I'm listening to Seth Andrews and the next one that starts up is Seth Andrews interviewing my sister-in-law. And I was like, what? What? What is Aaron doing on his show? That's so, how you found out? That's how I found that out. That is, I love that so it much. Was, I went <laughs> like, running in. My husband was working. I went so crazy. running in because the night before I was talking about Seth Andrews to, to my husband, Brian, I was like, I just think this guy is so nice. Like he is so kind and compassionate. And I was going on and on about why I love listening to his show. So I went and I go, remember that guy I was telling you about, I like listening to so much. Well, look who's on his show. And I showed him my phone. He's like, what? (laughs) So I texted Erin and um, she was shocked to hear from me because apparently I was someone, she was very nervous about me finding out about her activism um not sure how I would respond and so when I told her I had seen her on Seth's show and hi I'm also an atheist and um I told her all the people that I had been like reading books and listening to to different podcasts she's like I can't believe you're saying these names like I can't believe you know who these people are like this is just blowing my mind um we we did a, a FaceTime the next night because she wanted to know like what the heck happened and um so she said well I'm gonna she she mentioned our our chat on Twitter and then the next day she said I'm gonna just introduce you so I'm like okay whatever that means and so she introduced me and um then Neil the 604 atheist said oh I do deconversion stories do you want to come on and I'm like okay so I did that and that's kind of where people were like oh do you want to come on and do a show here and I was like this is so crazy like people want to talk to me about leaving Christianity okay (laughs) so I can see why like I mean I love when you talk it's like you're so vibrant and (laughs) it's like you're very positive you know when you're talking about your experiences and you know you're engaging and interesting to listen to so I can see how that happens (laughs) thank you well I was gonna say um I have no problem sharing because I really enjoy listening to other people's stories and that's what I spent a lot of time listening to is connecting with others through uh, medias like this, because yeah. I wanted to know there's other people who have gone through this. Um, I was actually searching for different testimonies, <laughs> ex testimonies. Yeah. I don't know what to call it, but I was looking for other people who had, um, gone through this and I wanted to know if they had shared their stories. And mm-hmm. so, um, that's why I have no problem sharing this so publicly um in in such a short time because this is what helped me early on Mm -hmm. um and I just if if I can help someone else who's doing it early or just not sure where to turn I don't mind because I was such a public person with my faith that Mm -hmm. I just I'm not someone who hides who I am you know yeah so 
that's well, another reason why I don't mind <laughs> doing yeah, this. Yeah, I love that. And I mean, that's something we always uh, kind of talk about here at RFR too, is this idea that, you know, maybe, you know, part of a healing journey can include helping other people heal. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. sounds to me like, you know, what you're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love that you were able to just <laughs> immediately be like, I, okay, I'm, I'm going through this and let me reach out to other people and we're going to talk about it. Yeah, like, it, yeah. It tells me a thing. <laughs> so <laughs> some that go through the process are like, I want to help other people to go through yeah, such process. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and I was listening to um, Matt Delahunty the other day and he said, in a way, this when he does stuff like this like with his activism it kind of is sort of like his penance for all the (laughs) yeah and I was like that's such a good way of putting like I I never went and like preached on street corners or anything but I was very public on my social media as a Christian so um I'm very public on my social media now Mm. as a atheist or as you know like I I, I've talked about this oh. before in other talks as some of those former pagan and believed in woo stuff that mm-hmm. my activism is a part of that penance because yeah. I was supporting a lot of those bad ideas and now I want to help people get out of bad ideas. So the fact yeah. that like Stacy, you're like, <laughs> I want to get people out of bad ideas, like just like makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> like we can do our penance together. Yeah. That's- <laughs> It, it was such a good way of him putting it that I yeah. just kind of stuck and I'm like, oh, that's exactly what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, so. I love that. Yeah. Well, and like, tell us a little bit about too, like where people can find you. We got a few more minutes, but while sure. we're on the topic, like where are you doing this penance and where can we view it? <laughs> um, well, we're changing our show time for um, Secular Soapbox. So it's going to be Thursdays at 8. 30 central time I have to get that right um so yeah Thursdays at 8 30 central on YouTube and then I'm on social media I'm on Facebook Instagram Twitter and TikTok and my screen name is apostasy so it's a play on the word apostasy but it's my name (laughs) so I can just type it in the chat and then there you Excellent. go. You can yes. just, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Excellent. So and your show there. That's, yeah, that's great. I love it. I love that you had like a catchy name and everything right off the bat. Well, it, it well took done. me, well, when Aaron said, I'm going to introduce you, I was like, oh, I got to come up with a name, but it, I just came up with X Bundy really quick. And I'm like, that's not what I want. And then I was like mopping my floor one day and it just popped in my head, apostasy sounds like Stacy. <laughs> so love it. I changed it. I'm like, this is way better. Yeah. Yeah. I the like demons it. were convicting you and, and you took yes. it. Around well, it. actually it was a, a, a Christian on my social media. She posted something about apostasy and I was like, Oh, sad. So I took her little thing that was supposed to probably shame me. And I was like, I'm going to use it, put my name in it. <laughs> I love that strategy because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask, you know, being that you were so public as a Christian and then mm-hmm. pretty rapidly, you know, came out as yeah. secular and yeah. were doing activism about it, I imagine you must have gotten, you know, some pretty intense blowback. Oh, yeah. I'll, I didn't even touch on this. I'll do it quick because I know yeah. we probably have only a few minutes, but be, with joining that reform church, um, mm. you you can't just leave like you can a charismatic church or just, you know, your church down the street where they just are like, okay, they don't call you again or whatever. Um, with the reform church, they spent from April until November calling us out from the pulpit. Um, every couple of weeks they did, um, formal announcements. Um, uh, first they sent us a formal letter letting us know we needed to, um, repent. Wow. Of our, yeah. They yeah. let telling us we had to repent or they were going to follow through with their three announcements. Um, but then they mentioned us a bunch of times, like the, the, the wayward family, that's what we were referred to. Um, wow. they meant they 
just they mentioned our kids because they can they live oh that's stream. that's gross yeah that's they really live gross stream. so um I could kind of I could tune in and see it and they mentioned like our names our three boys names um basically more like let's pray for the three boys names um and then Brian and Stacy and their their wayward apostateness and um just our now that we were bad parents or like our yeah they just called us out and then on mm. my husband's birthday which I don't think they planned that but uh they officially excommunicated us and they had a whole service up on ex our exccommunication um yeah wow. I didn't wow. realize that I'm, was a I'm, thing in the reformed church yes yeah so as a mama and just mm. someone that I don't want you to air my fucking dirty laundry <laughs> like I'm sitting here kind of mad for you and I'm like what yeah. the fuck mofos I know <laughs> my mom still gets like she still gets very angry very heated and I think actually they sped the process up because my mom left a Google review on their church, just kind of like <laughs> she, and then I love your mom. <laughs> yeah. She's awesome. She's very mama bear. Right. Um, yeah. And yeah, so she kind of sped things up and then someone from that church tried to add her on Facebook and she's like, why are you adding me? Like, are you just trying to keep tabs on my daughter? Um, so yeah. So I love your like, mom. <laughs> I know, she's great. She's great. So but every time they would mention us on, on the service, um, I would have a flood of the people come to my personal Instagram to check out my Insta stories and watch them. And I'm like, oh, they must have said something about us today. So I'd go to the sermon and be, oh, yeah, they mentioned us. Okay. So. I, I would love to know how many people listened to that sermon and then went and watched your videos and started to have doubts oh, themselves. Yeah. I hope they did. <laughs> I hope so. Because... Every chance I get, oh, that'd be sweet. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> but every chance I get, I always say they did not make those announcements for the for our benefit or to bring oh, us right. back. They made those announcements for the people sitting in the pews to scare yeah. them to so that they don't get called out, so that they never leave the fear of them being named, and that's why they do that. It's so, mm -hmm. to scare them. So that they don't ever doubt or question. Yeah, so. it's back to that same thing you talked about at the beginning. If you get yeah. enough fear into people, it, it doesn't matter because they're too afraid yeah. to, to question it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so that's what happens. And wow. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that happened to you. Oh, it's that's... fine. It's okay. I'm glad it's done. And actually, I'm just, I'm glad that that is done. We didn't have to carry that into the new year. Um, you are so easygoing. Yeah. I love this. This is why everyone oh. invites you on their show. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I love it. Uh, I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, my foes. I'm living my best life. <laughs> yeah. well, that's, Watch me. I actually am. I'm super happy. I'm, I'm really, I'm super happy. Um, I, I feel like I've never met nicer people in the, that I, than I have in the last year. And just connecting with with everyone by doing this um it my life has never been better as far as connections and I'm just happy <laughs> so yeah. I love that I love yeah to hear it. yeah so I can't that, fake that right no so, no yeah. and that that is an excellent note to wrap up on, but before we do, do you have any like final comments or any advice for people who might be going through a similar experience well, or questioning? I'd say my biggest advice is if you do have those doubts, I think everyone might say this, but it's so true. Um, I always think back to 2019 when I had those doubts and I just remember circling back around to like, but no, it has to be true because don't talk yourself out of it. If you have those doubts, they're there for a reason. You mm -hmm. have critical thinking skills for a reason mm -hmm. and just continue with them. So if you have questions, don't go to your pastor or your faith leaders because they're just going to give you the information that they want you to know about. Find your information yourself. Um, 
use the library because it's there. It's free. <laughs> um, you can just, that's what I did. I checked out so many books because, and even if you don't read them all or you just flip through a bunch, just there's so much power in knowledge and just explore everything you can and don't ignore those doubts. Just please don't ignore them. So, yeah. Yeah. Great advice. And I'm glad yeah. you didn't ignore them and you Me went too. And learned. <laughs> finally, yes. finally. Well, yeah. I'm so glad you did and that you made it out and you met some nice people who are not going to put <laughs> well, you, you on guys blast. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We try not to be assholes. Yeah, <laughs> I have not met a single one <laughs> in any of this at all. So excellent, yeah. excellent. That is what we like to hear. Like nobody's yeah. perfect, a, but you know, I'm always like my RFR friends are the best. Yes. <laughs> this is why yeah. Monday night is my favorite night of the week. And it is the best night. night. Yes. Yes. Awesome. And I don't know if you know, you're 20% cooler now because you were here. You are. You are 20% cooler. And, and that's how it works. It's awesome. science. It's, it's science. It's, yeah. it's a true it's science. science. That I came okay. up with. <laughs> well, I Do I science. have any empirical data? <laughs> no. Yeah. But the fact that you're here, you're 20% cooler. <laughs> that's, okay, good. That's a thing. You can have that. 20.567% cooler. Yes, it's exact. <laughs> Rob would know. He's yeah, he's he does done yeah. the science. Awesome. Well, what do you say we move to some Q and A? Stacy, are you sure. ready to answer some questions? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Outstanding. Well, we have collected several from the chat, and if I missed any, uh, I apologize. Um, feel free if you have a question for Stacy now to type it in the chat. We'll get through as many as we can. We might not get to all of them, but you know, we'll have to hang out after this too. So, <laughs> no worries. Okay. So. We had our first question was, someone was wondering how old you were when you met your husband. I was 20. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So that's 20. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> and so that was, yeah, I can, I can definitely relate to uh, what you were telling about the people in the church trying to date so they could hurry and get married real fast because yes. like, you don't have any other options. No. And it's funny because when I told my husband when we were dating, um, just so you know, like I'm kind of saving myself. His answer was, I'm not gonna marry you any faster. And I was Ooh. like, that's not Ooh. what I'm, that's not why I'm telling you. And he's like, Okay, that's fine. So wow. Yeah. So he kind of had the same reaction you did, but in reverse. Yeah, exactly. So he, he's a great guy. So <laughs> and Excellent. then we got married when I was 22. So it was Excellent. it was a good, good two years. So how did you find a new community after you left the church? Um, honestly, through online. That's it. I found, I started chatting with a lot of people on Instagram at first, and then um, now through YouTube and, and the show and everything. Um, I don't have a real community like outside of it because, like I said, we moved to a new city mm -hmm. and I still don't know really anyone here so my social life is this yeah. <laughs> right now uh, yeah my community yeah it's when I'm not here I'm with my mom my husband and my kids and that's enough for me that's yeah and so yeah. doing stuff like this I said to my husband last night this is kind of like me going out for dinner with friends you know so yes. yeah and he's like yes. that's good yeah. You can join us here anytime. We're here yeah. every Monday. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Or you go be, go just increase your coolness every time you show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why we have to hang out too at the end, honestly. Yeah. So it's, it helps. Know, it's just to feed my it ego. <laughs> yeah. That and hanging out with friends, you know. That's right. <laughs> Two for one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we have several more questions here. We'll okay, get through wow. some more. So some other people were wondering, um, uh, back to the demons and spirits, and mm -hmm. we've talked about this on here before, but can you tell us more about, uh, someone was wondering, are demons and spirits the same thing? How does this work? How like deep into the details and specifics uh, did you get? Yeah, I, I think at that time, I thought they were the, like one in the same. Okay. Um, 
but I was very much someone who thought they were hiding around every corner. Yeah. <laughs> um, if, if, if I lent my clothes to someone who wasn't a Christian or if they wore them somewhere, I was, I'd come back and pray over them because I was like, well, I don't know where they wore them. And I don't want to let spirits like, oh, wow. and then maybe they'll be attached to me or if we moved into a new house, of course, I would anoint the house with oil. Again, I didn't let my husband know this part about me, really. Like, yeah, I would do it when he was at work. I would anoint the door frames with oil and, oh, and wow. um, yeah, open the door and then tell everything to leave. <laughs> Just be talking to myself. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. So even stores in the mall, I'd sometimes think I felt like a heaviness come over me so I'd be like okay I should probably get out of this store I'm feeling really heavy you know press so I don't know it's just so, a lot of mind games yeah, so yeah pretty much anything that can happen can can be attributed to demons or exactly spirits and especially invisible. yeah and especially in charismatic like everything there's there's a a spirit of headache a spirit of pornography a spirit mm -hmm. there's everything a spirit of this a spirit of that so you got to pray bind the spirit of this so it's it, it, spirit and demon are, are the same thing yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. we had yeah. that too in, in yeah. my school it was it, you would have the spirit of you know x y or z thing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. when and, it's like, just, what does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, exactly. it sounds like this is supposed to be a metaphor, but then you're telling yeah. me it's a literal spirit. Like, yeah. Is it both? What? I know. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. 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 No, I, I totally understand. I, I grew up the same way and was, you know, constantly worried I was going to accidentally let the demon in by right? thinking the wrong thing or, you yeah. know, touching the wrong thing. It's like you, you couldn't avoid it. Yeah. Catholics Please. don't have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we yeah. we did. Yeah, I I totally yeah. understand what you mean. It keeps you on your toes and fearful at mm -hmm. all times. You could mess up at any moment and accidentally invite a demon in. And Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on, Helen. You got one. Yeah. Um. So someone was wondering, what was the documentary that you watched that made you question your beliefs? It, it was called American Gospel. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I have not seen that one, but now I want to. Okay. <laughs> you can watch the first hour of it for free on YouTube, as far as I know still. But it's like a two and a half hour documentary. Oh, wow. So is it, yeah. um, can you get, so I know you talked a little bit about it. Is it more about like the idea of like um, Christianity through like American lens? Kind, yeah, like it's basically how America has kind of twisted the gospel and exported mm. it out to the world as this sort of you can pray to get what you want type of thing they show a lot of like kenneth copeland and so a prosperity gospel kind of prosperity shit. gospel exactly yeah, yeah. and then it, it kind of dissects it um they kind of break down like christianity and catholicism and then it's like mm. it, it it's really heavily reformed even though you don't kind of know that at first mm -hmm. and that's what pushed me into the reformed camp without knowing that's what I was getting myself into because I was like oh this is definitely the gospel then I had it all wrong <laughs> so interesting yeah, yeah I've never I, seen I, that either I, yeah, yeah we're gonna, we'll have to have a discussion about it yeah, after you watch it <laughs> after they came out with that they came out with their whole a whole streaming service called AGTV so you can subscribe to it and they they put out tons of Christian content um that's all theologically sound so yeah oh I, I oh I feel some debunking going on I like, <laughs> yeah. you can no I think you can subscribe <laughs> for a seven-day trial and you could you could watch the documentary so yeah you have oh. to rest on the seventh day though yeah they did another one. That's why seven days. That's why. It's just six days yeah. of viewing. The seventh day. day, you just rest and reflect. Yeah. They did a second one, American Gospel, called uh, Christ. Uh, not, it's just a second one, Christ Alone. Or I can't remember what it's called. But they did it from, uh, they interviewed a couple, like, um, 
couple atheists too. So they did it from that perspective, like humanists and secular. so that would be secular. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be an interesting one to watch. Okay. I just I, I, I like I hear American yeah. gospel and I just feel like this would be like a really cool like movie like that by like it would be done by like pure flicks like a spoof oh, like yeah, American yeah. gospel <laughs> sounds like a spoof of like yeah. a pure flicks movie like that's yeah. like I need that in my life yeah <laughs> I keep hearing that and I just keep thinking American gothic in my picture that's what like I am, like... with a pitchfork <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, just go funny. around poking people yeah. <laughs> oh, man. okay uh yeah. moving on we've got more questions um two of these questions are similar so i'll just ask them together i guess um several people were wondering if you want to talk about this you can if not we can leave it off limits um but they were wondering uh how your transition away from Christianity to secular beliefs affected your children and whether they also hmm. sort of followed in that way or or how you talk to them about this and, and what they believe? Um, no, that's a great question. Um, so my oldest is 10, he'll be 11 in March. Then my middle is eight. And then my youngest is three, who definitely children are born atheists because he is definitely a born atheist. He has no desire, um, anything to do with Christianity, which is funny. Um, but my oldest, he had some questions because he kind of saw some of the things I was watching on YouTube. Like he would see it on my phone. Um, one of the videos last February was, did Jesus exist? And he was, his immediate response was, of course, Jesus exists why are you watching that? And I was like, Oh, I'm not, I know that. Like I just kind of played it off. And then he would see my books that I got from the library, but I hid them um, from him under the bed. And I just, I didn't let him see them at first. Cause I, I didn't want to freak him out. Cause again, he had been going to a Christian school from K to four. Right. And, uh, but all of them had atheists written all over the cover awesome. and like, you know, the God delusion and God is not great and all these things like mom, dad, I'm an atheist. And so he's like, what does atheist mean? What does atheist mean? And I'm like, just look it up. Like, I didn't want to really answer him right off the bat. Um, but slowly throughout the last year, we've had some really good discussions and um, he, he now knows that uh what my show is about and he's asked and he uh he's fine with it and it I didn't want to say anything too quickly to him because when I tried to talk a little bit about evolution a year ago he kind of broke down into tears and he's like do you mean the bible's not true and I was like oh I, I, I can't go there right now like I didn't want to freak him out this was my my discovery and he's so little I, I kept thinking if if someone came to me at his age and the way I believed I wouldn't have been able to handle it so I wasn't gonna push this on him so just throughout the last year it's just kind of been like a natural thing that's progressed and just as he's noticed we stopped going to church and the books I've been reading and sort of just overhearing conversation and him asking questions. Um, now we can talk about it. And, and I've been very blunt with him and said, look, this is where I'm at. You don't have to, to believe this. You can find things out on your own. You can tell me things that you discover. Maybe I'm not right. Um, and so he's, he's been, he's been adjusting very well. And um, I've told him how I was really quick at times to say certain things were wrong, um, like Halloween. We celebrated our first Halloween this year, which was a lot of fun. Um, it's my favorite holiday. It's yeah. my favorite holiday. It was so much fun. We had the best time. Um, so, you know, there were certain things where I would just kind of just say, no, we can't do that. That's bad. Jesus wouldn't like that. So. Um, 
yeah, I just was very honest, like, hey, I, I was really quick to say this was bad and there's nothing wrong with it. So um, I just admitted where I was at fault and, and he could see that I'm not perfect. And yeah, so we've just, he's been great. My, and my middle son, um, he hasn't really asked as many questions. He's, he's not, I don't think as affected. He's kind of younger and um, I think he kind of knows too. It's been fine. And then my little guy, okay, my middle son, he used to ask to pray every night for like a good four or five months. And my mom prayed with him one night and she's like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to say? Like, I don't want to do this, but okay, I will. And then my little guy was like, you're not going to pray with me, are you? <laughs> like, she's just like, oh my gosh, no, I won't. So she's like, yeah, you can tell like kids are only like, told or believe what they're told right because Luke was he's never really been to church because he was a pandemic baby right so oh, yeah yeah wow so. time really flies you're right yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow yeah. I just said a uh, huh <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's yeah. interesting yeah so. you're right that's yeah. got to be a whole thing that's going to be a whole sociological study yeah. <laughs> in and of itself about but he's 15 20 years going, from now right? so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, i wonder like what the shift is now for if you didn't go to church like and you didn't mm -hmm. get you're not drinking the kool-aid every week yeah you know oh, totally yeah yeah well, my, uh, what what the after effect of that is yeah well, my first Probably clue, less anxiety. Oh, I think so. I hope, I hope so. so. I hope so. Because I was noticing with my oldest son, he was getting quite a bit of anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, I'm seeing a lot of the same um, things that I was dealing with. And I don't see it anymore. Um, but I knew one of the, uh, a good sign with him is back in like June or so we were camping and I asked him a question about the Bible. I'm like, do you think this is true? And he's like, mommy. I do not think that talk, snakes can actually talk. And I was like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> I was like, okay, good. So Just I knew checking. we were, yeah, I'm like, okay. Because uh, they taught that there at his mm -hmm. school. So yeah, yeah, that's what we learned too. Yeah. 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 And you yeah. know, if you, if you learn that in school from a young age, you believe it because that's the, what the people you trust that's told what you. Your like, teacher's telling you, right? Yeah. So, what yeah. else would you think? Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Wow. That's great. It sounds like you really put a lot of thought into being honest and yeah. sensitive uh, with yeah. your kids about what's going and on. And I slowly got rid of their like Christian books. Like I didn't just toss them immediately. I was, yeah, I, uh, I, I think I just got rid of them in the summer. Like I, I didn't, if, if they were kind of reading them, I was like, okay, but they, they hadn't picked them up in months. So I was like, yeah. I'll donate them now. And they hadn't it's, asked for them so it's like the same thing that happens to the halloween candy it just kind of yeah. slowly disappears <laughs> exactly so but i'm like i don't really want them to read these anymore so i i mean like i came across we were going through we're going through our um stuff that we put kind of put into the garage when we were moving and i found my kids old baptism shrouds and candles oh. and stuff like that and i was like oh my goodness like and I still have them in my box and I put them in the bookcase and, I, and I'm like these are mementos yeah because <laughs> my kids because my kids are very atheist they have right. no interest in religion they they're like fuck it nope you know <laughs> but like this is but it's stuff for me it's not for yeah. them you yeah. know because they have no emotional connection to it where I grew up Catholic that I have still a little bit of that emotional right. connection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes yeah. Sense. yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's see. All right. I don't know. Helen, do we have more questions? Maybe we have time for, what do you think? I think we more? need to do two more. Two more. Let's do two more. Let's do All two right. more and then we'll move to the chat, the yeah. hangout. <laughs> All right. And we can wrap this party up. Yes. <laughs> Blow this popsicle stand. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Why would uh, you want to blow the popsicle stand? Because they have popsicles. I, I don't really know. That is a quote from some movie or show. I know. And I don't know. And, from, 
but I don't I'm like, either. they have popsicles. Somebody <laughs> let us know in the chat. Where where is yeah. that from? It's like deep, deep in my like 80s pop culture or something. I, I don't know. I apologize to everyone. Moving on to a question. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay. Um, oh, this is actually one I was wondering about too. And someone else asked. So um, I bet you're familiar with the term being unevenly yoked. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did that ever come up when uh, from friends or family about oh, your relationship? And yes. Yeah. Well, not from friends or family, but I always thought that. Ooh. Like the more I got into my own beliefs, I kept thinking, oh man, like, are we unequally yoked? Like, even though I adored my husband, yeah, I, I was like, oh, did I, maybe, maybe we, I should have married a more Christian person. I don't know, but yeah. not, not that I had any regrets or anything. It was just, I don't know that it's such a, that's such a hard term that they, they use and it's very manipulative, right? Yes. But it, you can be unequally yoked in, in the smallest of things, like even in, right. in your beliefs and your theology, and you know, so. Right. In almost any yeah. way, like in any way yeah. that you're different from your yeah. partner. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. even the fact that like, when we got married, he wasn't baptized. And so that was a real like thorn in our side for a while. Cause he didn't get baptized until I think 2018. So I was just like, we're unequally yoked. You need to get baptized. Yeah, and yeah. I kind of pushed him and, yeah. um, cause I and felt he like, did it. and he did it. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And for people so. that aren't familiar with the term, like, do you want to describe like what that means to be? Yeah. Cause I, I was like, what, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> oh, man. It's something to do with a horse. Yeah. Like, and, I like, in I'm... their, putting it in their, I don't know. Do you know how to, like a bit? Yeah. Like a, yeah. Like a it's like, bit. like, it's a bit. metaphor. It's an Old Testament <laughs> yeah. metaphor. I think the idea is like, if you have two draft animals that are supposed to be like plowing or pulling something and you have a, a yoke on them which is I guess just like a like a restraint that yeah. attaches them to what okay. they're pulling and the idea is that they need to be like roughly equivalent in size and strength in order yeah. to make it go straight you know uh and so uh if one is you know much bigger than the other or something it's going to be all lopsided and it's not going to work off balance and so, and yeah yeah and so the metaphor is if you get married to someone mm -hmm. you're both supposed to be yoked to the same master which is god and if one of you is more strong in the spirit than the other right. then it's going to be unbalanced be and you're not pulling in the same you're, you're not coordinated in your efforts i think exactly is, i think you you did a great job because okay. i just know the term and i was always like I'm afraid we're unequal. So you always, yes. so both of you always have the obedience to the God master and, yeah. and on the same yeah. path. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And All right. I always All right. felt That's like, healthy. <laughs> I also felt like I wanted him to be the spiritual leader of the home. And, mm -hmm. and I always felt like, well, I know more, so I shouldn't be the, I shouldn't know more. You should know more um spiritually oh internalized yeah. misogyny yeah right. yeah yeah there you go so gross. i was like gross i shouldn't be so the spiritual gross. leader you you should be the yeah so that that's dumb which the whole <laughs> metaphor doesn't right. even make sense anyway because in the no. metaphor they're supposed to be equal but that's decidedly different from the husband being the spiritual leader who's stronger right. in the spirit so like it doesn't yeah. even it's it's doesn't <laughs> like <laughs> it doesn't work like you're supposed to be the same yeah but unless there's something i don't know about your man. oxen like what the fuck yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe you should study oxen more yeah I and get to, back yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to y'all next yeah. week with, okay. with the results of that <laughs> we'll find out that oxen are actually matriarchal <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah could be <laughs> okay oh helen yeah. do we have one more question <laughs> Yes, I have one. So um, I'm going to go a little bit, not that this conversation about oxen is not fascinating. <laughs> um, is there any music that kind of helped you through your deconversion process? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I did find some 
I actually did find some songs um, that were written by people who also were going through like deconstruction or deconversion. Um, but there was one song that, that song unwritten by, oh, yeah. what is her name? Is it unwritten? Like, is it Michelle Branch? No, oh, no, you're kind of on the right path. I'm just going to look it up on Spotify. <laughs> Natasha Bedingfield. That's it. Yeah. That song went through my head nonstop. And that was sort of like the song that I just kept singing over and over and over again. So yeah. And then I, I did make a little, um, Spotify playlist, um, of some deconstruction songs. Yeah. Deconstruction what? playlist. Yeah. And there's a guy named nation Haven and, um, he has a song called who I am. And that's a really good song about, um, deconstruction and then one more song is by the dixie chicks not ready to make nice oh i um, love that song that's a that great song. song that's a We're great not, song yes when the church um called us out that first sunday i blasted that song not ready to make nice i was just like screaming that one at the top of my lungs practically so that's I'd only think. a dude conversion. That's a great feminist song. It, that it too. Is. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, that that's a good song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's not a lot of songs on that playlist, but anytime oh, girl, I, I can give you one, some, I got a whole dude yeah. <laughs> playlist I can give you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's a few more that I've heard since then that I need to actually add, but yeah, th those, those three would be my top, my top songs. Oh. Another another great song is God by Tori Amos that you need to listen to. Oh, it is a great it is, is a great song of mm. um the the view of God from a feminist perspective. Yeah. So it's a gr yeah. really good um fuck you to God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I see, yes, I've heard Tim mention. Oh, I just yeah. saw in the chat. My uncle introduced me to him and I love him. <laughs> He is He's hilarious. Awesome. Yeah. I love his song. Oh, yeah. Tim Minchin is wonderful. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the anti-Carmen with like yes. the story song. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yes. That one song that he he did at that uh storm. I love that yes. one. Yeah. Yes. That Excellent. one is incredible. Oh love gosh. it. And I see that DJ loves it too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. I need to go through here and collect all these songs that we've talked about. We need to make a playlist, y'all. Yeah. Um, adding so this to good. my to-do list. That would be great. So good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Excellent question to end on. That was a really yeah. good question. Really good that was a good question. <laughs> I'm, I had answers. We're, like gonna have, that. we're just going to have to make an RFR, you know, um, fuck God pre playlist. playlist. That's, that's yeah. just going to be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. good idea <laughs> all right well yeah. on that note let's go ahead and start wrapping up so we can move to the hangout stacy right. thank you so much thank you us. this was fun i this actually like so seeing this everyone. was a lot of fun it was a good way to start 2023 yeah. in my yes. opinion yes <laughs> excellent start to the year so thank yeah. you and uh we'll move into the hangout in just okay. a second we'll just wrap up with a few announcements uh first and foremost join us next week we'll be back again next week even though it is a holiday it's mlk day but we will be here celebrating and having the best night of the week on monday at rfrx so join us again same bat time same bat channel don't forget to check out the recordings if you need more rfrx in between now and then on our youtube channel or wherever you get your podcasts and you can email us with questions or comments and check out our blog and our podcast so let me drop those in the chat as well and while i do that helen do you want to mention where people can find us on the social medias yes people i know that you're on the socials i know that you are so you're gonna go to facebook and you're gonna go to the recovering from religion main page and you're gonna become you're gonna like and you're gonna join us that's what you're gonna do 
and you're going to also go to the Facebook support group page. So if you want to find out more about our support groups and get a little bit of additional help online, because some of our agents are on there, you're going to go to the Facebook Facebook support group. Also, too, we are on the Twitter until Musk decides to burn into oblivion. But until that happens, please go to the Twitter and engage and share and like and do the tweeting as you do. Also, to go to the Instagram, go to the TikTok and share, like, subscribe, do all the social media stuff that you have to do to engage with recovering from religion and get our message out. That is the command that I give you as your fearless psychic leader. <laughs> that is your job. <laughs> so you must do these things to make me happy and be 20% cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Rewards at the end. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> yes, heed her word. And while you're at it, fill out this poll that I will watch, uh, and I will read it. Our going to speak to you, and you got to listen to them. It's going to yes. be a thing. <laughs> yes, listen carefully. It's the same thing you hear at the end of every episode. We'd like to hear from you about how it went. Um, so please answer these poll questions. They are all anonymous. It helps us know how things are going. So question number one, as always, is this program was relevant to me. And it's a scale of one through five, with one being not at all relevant, up through five, very much relevant. Question number two, the speaker was clear and understandable. I guess these are not actually questions, these are statements. Sorry, the speaker was clear and understandable. Uh, answer choice one, not at all understandable, all the way through five, very understandable. Uh, statement number three, I will definitely attend future programs like this, same answer scale with number one being definitely will not attend again, all the way through five, definitely will attend again. And then finally, how did you find RFRX tonight? Was it through the RFR online community or Slack? Was it through a meetup event? Was it through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram? Through Discord or something else? And I will leave that poll up for just a few minutes while we hear from Helen for some closing thoughts. Yes, yeah, so I would like to thank Stacey again for joining us to start 2023. I think that talking about the deconversion process and where you are now, even in the short time of just deconversion over the past like year or so and becoming an activist is really fucking wonderful. So I think that's great. Thank you for being here and sharing your story and talking about how you went through the process and what you're doing now. I think that's really like, mwah. Yeah, and I hope and I hope to hear more from you in the future and all the wonderful stuff that you're gonna do going forward. Because once you get the once you get the you know the nibbles in, you know, you keep wanting to eat. So <laughs> it's gonna keep going. So thank you so much for being here. So um I am going to say good night. Everyone have a wonderful week. Keep smiling make 2023 awesome so we can get out of the shitty timeline and into the best timeline good night <laughs> yes, good night thank you helen